What are time clocks and how do they work? Time clocks keep time. Clocks keep time. Why do we call it a time clock? Who knows? That's what we call them though. So on the label, it's called a 24 hour time switch. Some people might call it a timer, um, but lots of people call them time clocks. So what it is, is it allows us to set uh, through wiring this a certain way to set a timer so that lights can turn on and turn off at a certain time. So a lot of times you will see these um, this one is a particular piece of crap and it just keeps coming apart. Um, thank you, Torque. Um, it allows you to set a time. So there's these little trippers on here. Um, these things are completely removable. But it allows you to slide these trippers and you can set them to whatever time you want. So there's one that is set up to engage the time clock on. There's one of them that is set to engage it off. Sometimes people will just take the trippers off altogether. Sometimes they don't put them on tight enough and then they slip off or they slide around and then the thing stops working. So with every time clock, you've got an off and an on manual switch. So if you're ever working on something and you just kind of want to manually override the lights, you can come over, it'll be in the off state probably. You can turn them on manually with the on button or you can turn them off. So there's an on off function and then you have the timer. This timer actually spins um, and it allows you to set whatever the current time is. At the bottom of all these, there's a little thing that says time. It's a little arrow. That time arrow is the current time. So you always have to look at your watch, make sure that you set this thing to the current time and then set your trippers. So you'll notice there's a dark 12 hours and there's a light 12 hours, PM, AM. It's gonna show you the arrows show you what time it is. So as this thing's ticking, it's gonna sit and spin. And based off of where you set the time, it's gonna turn off and on. So a lot of times what we'll do is like a dawn to dusk sort of thing. So in the when the sun's coming up in the morning, as soon as sunlight hits, a lot of times that's gonna be at 6 a.m. We want the lights to shut off. So we would take the off tripper and put it at six o'clock. Then we would take the on tripper when we when the sun starts to come or go down and things start getting dark. So that might be seven o'clock, eight o'clock, six o'clock, kind of depends where you're at in the in the country. Um, but you can set that. So then every time this thing spins, these little trippers are gonna come down and engage the back side of this and it's gonna trip it like this using the mechanics of, of the tripper in the back of it. And as it keeps going around, it's gonna hit it a little bit differently because those two trippers are, are designed somewhat differently and it's gonna turn it off. So it's basically manually doing it. It's hitting a manual switch back here, um, but it's using the clock function. Now, this thing's not gonna work unless you hook power up to it. So the clock is not going to spin unless there's power in the bottom of this. So you have to wire these things a certain way. Take the bottom off of here. Always save these cards so that you can put them back on. So there's a wiring diagram that comes on the inside of every one of these time clocks. And you can see right here, it shows you how to wire it. It says to bring your hot to the number one terminal. This is our number one terminal. It says to bring our neutral into the X terminal and share it with the load. So whatever light, you know, like we have a, a leg going out to a light somewhere, we tie that neutral, the incoming neutral from the breaker into the X terminal. And that X terminal is cooked up to the actual clock in here. Um, so our hot coming into one and this X terminal are actually what the circuit is that completes a circuit through this clock and it allows the clock to become energized. Then you can wire it a couple of different ways, depending on if you have motor loads, if you're doing 277, 120 volt lighting, there's all kinds of different ways that these things are set up. Some of these are gonna be two pole um, so that you can turn on a two pole load. Um, some of them will have multiple terminals. Some of them are only for single phase loads. So you have to be careful when you're getting one of these to see, okay, is this one something that I'm gonna have one leg coming in and one leg coming out, or can I do a 220 coming in, 220 going out? Just make sure that you're getting the right one. But you're gonna hook uh, your X2 up to your leg. So essentially you're getting power here and here, that's just running the clock. And then when the time uh, turns on, or when, it's, when you're trying to turn the lights on, 
uh, as soon as this thing turns on because it's spinning, it's gonna power this terminal. It's gonna send power out. And then once the timer gets all the way around, you can hear it. Every time it spins, turns on, turns off, turns on, turns off. So every time it turns off, it's gonna cut power to this terminal and shut the load off. That is a time clock. That's as hard as they need to be. That's as easy as they are. A lot of people seem to struggle with these though and not know what the problem is and how to set them right. One thing that you need to think about when you're putting time clocks on is because it's mechanically changing the time, you have to change the time. So a lot of times when we would do property management for you know commercial uh, properties that we would have, we would have like a maintenance contract and we were constantly coming out just checking all the parking lot lights, making sure all the wall packs around the place were on, all the cans were working and the monument signs were on. Um, we would just go around and inspect. But one of the things we had to do is every time there was a time change and the clocks got set back, we would have to go and fix all of these because then the lights are coming on too early or they're staying on when they shouldn't. Um, so that's one thing to be careful of. Another thing that's kind of a trick that you can do with these things is you can have multiple trippers. So sometimes you can get multiple sets of trippers and you can have an on and an off and an on and an off. So if I were to take an off and an on and an off and an on, I could get this thing to turn on for a certain amount of time. So say I, like, the sun's going down, it's starting to get dark out, and I wanna flip those lights on. I'd have an on tripper so that it would turn the lights on. And say I only want light for a certain amount of time when employees are leaving and going out to their cars, say like 11 o'clock at night when things close. They get out to their cars, by 12 o'clock nobody should be there anymore and I want the lights to shut off. And I want them to stay off all night. But in the morning, when people are coming back in, when it's dark, say like five o'clock in the morning, I want the lights to kick back on again and then stay on until the sun comes up, say maybe like seven o'clock-ish. So there's a trick that you can use to get multiple timers on here. Just the one thing that I always recommend is take a pair of lineman's pliers when you put these things on, when you screw them on, get them hand tight, but then take your lineman's pliers out and just give it like one more quarter turn because the constant friction and the hitting of this over and over and over, a lot of times it loosens these things up if you don't put them on tight enough. And then you're doing service calls to fix stuff that you did wrong because you didn't tighten them and now stuff's just not working because you didn't do it right. You can also use photo cells in conjunction with time clocks. Uh, if you don't wanna do the double tripper thing, a lot of people will do a photo cell that's controlled by a time clock. So that way when the time clock turns on, it'll allow power to be sent, but it won't actually get sent through until the photo cell senses light and dark. That way you don't really have to worry whether or not things are set up you know, at a certain time. You don't have to worry about the time changes and things like that. Um, there's a lot better methods for doing all of this. I'm just letting you know this is some of the stuff you're probably gonna see as a service electrician out in the field is either a time clock or a photo cell or a combination of the two. Sometimes you won't see any of this. Sometimes somebody's gonna have a digital timer that they program things in, um, but you know, if they lose power, you lose the program. But if you lose power on the control circuit to this, you also lose the clock. So you might be going out there just because they lost power in a whole panel or like they lost a phase out at the utility or something like that. So uh, now you're going to have to reset the clock. So I don't like these mechanical things. The coolest thing is when a building has a building management system or a lighting control system. Um, so it's usually gonna be like a remotely monitored thing that through ethernet, there's somebody sitting on a computer and they can be like, oh, let's turn the lights on, let's turn them off. Oh, we can see there's a tripped breaker, something's up with our system over there. We need to call an electrician and see what's going on. Um, so some of them are like really smart like that. Other ones, they don't have any remote monitoring. They're just a huge panel with breakers and there's like a little uh, LED panel on the front and you can hit a button to turn pole lights on. You can hit another one for wall packs. Um, so they're programmed and it's a way to program all of your lighting so that you can go into the settings, have it turn certain relays on or certain contactors on, turn them off um, for different events and you know have manual override and all of that. That's the best case scenario. But a lot of the properties that are like older, cheaper maybe, they're gonna have stuff like this. So I hope that helps you understand the time clock. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one.